Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night everyone. Uh, I'm Reza Rad from Radicad and here I am with Miguel Lopez from uh, Power Query team. Uh, uh, he's uh, the man responsible for all cool things that you see in Power Query, in Power BI Desktop, sure. Excel, also, all other places. Also guilty for the ones that don't work as well. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone, nice being here, Reza. Great, thank invitation. you. Thank you for your time, really appreciate that. So um, uh, we managed to build a list of things that we think is quite good to go through and majority of those are about uh, updates and features and what's hot, what's new. So let's go about what are things uh, which is hot and new, especially on the data flow space. All right, awesome. So this week actually is a great week for everyone who is plugged into data flows. Uh, we are just releasing a big announcement on both Power BI and Power Apps for new data flows capabilities. It has over 50 new features this time around, including a bunch of new connectors, uh, things like the PDF connector, the folder connector, SharePoint folders, experiences like combining files, data profiling, managing of parameters, query parameters, uh, authoring of query functions uh, in, in Power Query Online, and many more things. So you guys should go read the blog. So a lot of, uh, a lot of new connectors. Yeah. Uh, and also the ability to uh, pass parameters in. That's right, uh, and to uh, author those parameters and bind them from the uh, query right. editor experience. With the, with the experience of UI, because yeah. uh, previously I think we could create it if we write MS script, but now we have the UI. That's right. Now that you mentioned MS script, we also are shipping M intelligence in Power Query Online. Oh, that, that's fantastic. Good news. M intelligence in Power Query Online in Dataflow. That's perfect. And uh, um, these are all going to be part of Pro, or some of them might be still like premium? Because Ev in everything is available to everyone. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so we got every everything covered. Uh, that, that that's really good news. So I'll uh, uh, check this uh, link down below for the um, for the blog <laughs> explaining that all all the details. Uh, that's perfect. So uh, we also have uh, a lot of things coming up for um, uh, Azure Data Factory. Oh yeah, actually a lot of new announcements uh, this week as well here at Ignite. Uh, in case you haven't been uh, plugged to them, uh, I'll just uh, recap. So uh, yesterday at the uh, at Rohan uh, keynote uh, on the Azure uh, data front, we announced the public preview of Wrangling Data Flows within Azure Data Factory. So Wrangling Data Flows is a new capability in Azure Data Factory that allows people to easily transform and reshape data that they've already ingested into Azure. For example, somebody could operate using the Power Query based experience on top of data that's already sitting in something like Azure Data Lake Storage. Great. Uh, and be able to actually run those Power Query transformations at scale. So behind the scenes, what's going on there is uh, Power Query is used as the query editor or query building experience, UI based, that generates M code that gets translated into a Spark SQL behind the scenes, so you can actually run this at Spark scale. Hmm, that's, that's fantastic. So it's, um, it's not just a script, it also has the UI in the data Yeah, exactly. The data it's factory. the Power Query Online Editor UI. Right. Mm, that, that's great. But much like in data flows in Power BI. Or right. Perhaps. And is it like um, including everything that we have in Dataflow or Power Query Desktop or some parts of it is not available yet? It's uh, only the data transformation capabilities right now. So right. think about it as Power Query without the connectors, but just the query editor experiences and the transforms. Right. So if I'm using um, Azure Data Factory, I can connect with the connectors in the Data Factory that's itself correct. to a data mm -hmm. source, then do all my transformation using Power Query Online in within that that's experience. That's right. Okay, that, that's fantastic. And then I can have whatever output I want as well, right? Because that's yeah. Data Factory. Yes. Okay, that, that's fantastic news for all of you who are familiar with Azure Data Factory doing integration with that. Uh, now, let's talk about another uh, things which is um, not new right now, but it was announced like a month or two ago, Query Diagnostics. Uh, right. A lot of you might heard about that, but are not aware what exactly it is, what it is showing to you and what path it is taking. So let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, how many of you have ever run into performance issues with your queries and things you'd like to Everyone. investigate <laughs> and understand and diagnose and troubleshoot and be able to eventually fix, right? 
Uh, I heard this sentence a lot over the last uh, few months, but basically uh, with the release of Query Diagnostics, Power, Power Query stops being a black box. It actually becomes something that you can troubleshoot, so you can uh, use the Query Diagnostics experience to go through and uh, start recording a set of actions within the Query Editor. For example, refreshing a query or applying a specific transform or given step and then stop recording and that will generate an output trace or recorded session that then you can, within Power BI Desktop, you can actually just visualize, slice and dice however you want. But that's, that's a great uh, way of analyzing your query because uh, in Power BI Desktop itself, we have Performance Analyzer. Performance Analyzer is good to capture DAX uh, expressions sent to the uh, data set, but if your Power Query sentence, if your Power Query transformation takes a long time, the query diagnosis is the way to go because it gives you the same experience, start and then run through the query, stop it, and you'll see what are the reasons that it is going. Yeah, you'll be uh, able to see, for example, the request that are being sent to the underlying data source, how long it took in the underlying server, for example, to process a given query until it came back, how much was spent in local evaluation within the mashup engine as well. That's great. And, and uh, are there more things coming under query diagnosis as well? Uh, yeah, we're looking at a few enhancements in a couple fronts. One is the actual recording experience as well. Right. Uh, so there we're Today you do start recording and then you have to go through a certain set of actions and stop recording. And stop. We plan to do what we call diagnosing current step. So it will just effectively kick off a diagnosis for the current thing that's selected, right? right. The current step in a given query. Okay. Uh, that's on that one front. Uh, on the other front, uh, in terms of the output, we're actually enhancing the schema output for those uh, recorded traces so that they plug nicely into some of the more advanced Power BI uh, visuals. For example, the composition tree, which is a new Power BI visual, uh, we're optimizing the output schema so you can actually understand how the overall query du duration is actually decomposed into different tasks or different uh, stages within the evaluation. Mm, that, that's fantastic. So if you are using Power Query, and I'm sure you are using, if you are using Power BI anyway, right? If you are using Power Query, query diagnosis is something that you definitely need to look up to. Um, and if you're not using Power Query, go to powerquery.com to learn about it. Oh, yes, that's actually the next one I've been talking about. So a lot of questions that I get from people is that uh, I want to learn about Power Query. I want a website that I get some more Power Query information. Where's documentation? Where are resources I can go and read? Which is? Powerquery.com is the new place to go. So we actually... Yes. Link down below. <laughs> so we just uh, launched the site a few months ago, actually. Uh, we are slowly ramping up the amount of content there. But think about it as uh, aggregation of all of the Power Query content across many different product integrations. So we're after as of today, you would go to, say, the Power BI documentation articles, or you would go to the Excel documentation articles to learn about some of the Power Query features in the context of those products. PowerQuery.com actually gives you this 360-degree view of everything Power Query. It talks about all the different product integrations we have. It sends you links to resources for each of those uh, communities, or it actually sends you also to the documentation articles for Power Query, for the M language, the full uh, function reference, best practices, connector developer, um, resources from the community, MVP blogs such as Reses and a few more uh, books, uh, coming uh, webinars and sessions uh, on the community. So PowerQuery.com is meant to be the hub for everything's Power Query across all products that it integrates with, which is a, a bunch right now. I think it's almost yes. like 10 products at this point. I, I lost count. <laughs> yes, yeah, Power Query is getting everywhere now, yeah. <laughs> which is good. Uh, so go and check out PowerQuery.com website. Very useful resource. Uh, a lot of you asked where I can learn about all M functions. Those are all available over there as well. Um, you, you will find it other places as well, but usually PowerQuery.com is a good place to find about all of those. Um, let's talk about some of the other Power, B, uh, um, Power Query in Power BI desktop functions. Uh, things okay. like uh, column by example and enhancement that we have on that stage. Uh, yeah, so with uh, the by example technologies in Power Query, it's one of my favorite areas in the product. This thing is one of the biggest differentiators compared to other uh, ETL tools out there who, who lack those capabilities. But uh, there's really a paradigm shift in how people operate with their data and how to actually get to specify transforms without specifying transforms, but just describing the output that you would like to get. So whether that is on top of an existing table in the query editor, you can go use add column from examples, which you access from the add column uh, tab in the ribbon. Or uh, if you're using the web connector, using something like web by example will allow you to extract literally any type of text-based content uh, in the 
in a website and we're continually enhancing that so last month for example we released an enhancements to the actually this month November uh, to the web by example capability so you can actually extract links uh, in addition to just the text uh, and uh, many more things that are coming so better um, or domain specific functions for uh, for by example for example date handling things like phone numbers formatting and things like that that we continue improving with every monthly release correct so so this is this is quite important feature that um Miguel talked about the ability to extract links. Um, like I, I did a blog article about, like for example, you want to extract links from a Power Query web page. Uh, sorry, from from a web page using Power Query. Before this feature, you had to go and find where that element sits. Uh, so it needed a little bit of like dev work it wasn't like that much but it at least needed a little bit of dev work now it's even much much more simpler much more easier you can just use the uh, uh, table by example really fantastic feature and get a um, couple of those links with the example very, very useful feature I highly recommend uh, have a look at those um, talking about these uh, by examples features because these are like more kind of let's say AI features we also have some AI features in the data flow recently like O2ML and things like that let's talk yeah. about those sure so we have what we call the AI insights capabilities which allow you to integrate with AutoML but also with out of the box Azure cognitive services things like language detection translation sentiment score analysis uh, for text columns and many more that are coming so yeah super excited and uh, they'll soon make their way into Power BI desktop as well right That's correct we're really excited about yes uh, uh, the only thing about these uh, AI functions in Dataflow is that they are all premium. They are all premium. That's at right. the moment. Yes. However, there are ways if you don't want to uh, spend premium, but then you have to spend on other places. Like you have to go purchase uh, cognitive services separately, do like web calls and things like that. Uh, so premium make it much more simpler for you, especially if you have premium, then you can use it easily. Um, Let's talk about how you get, uh, let's say, uh, these features built. Where do you get these features idea from? Oh, the idea to build... Uh, uh, let's say you want to build a new feature, right? Uh -huh. You have no idea of it, which, what feature is, let's say, the most popular feature. Okay. So uh, where do you go to look at? Uh, what is the website that people go and oh, I see. put their suggestions? Yeah, so we do have ideas forums on the, each of the products we integrate Power Query with. For example, there's ideas.powerbi.com. Uh, there's an Excel ideas forums, which I actually forgot the exact URL now, but I'm sure it will show here uh, we'll when we actually produce just this. Just check here. <laughs> uh, and uh, so on and so forth with Azure Data Factory, with Power Apps. Uh, so we keep a very close eye uh, to, to those communities to see what people are voting for. We have many other sources of feedback as well, MVPs being one, for example, Reza and many other product influencers are really important for us. Uh, but we also have other enterprise channels for uh, large enterprise customers using Power BI and Power Apps and other products. And definitely conferences like this and talking to people. So um, yeah, we have a booth here, we have sessions. We spend uh, the entire week talking to people about how they use Power Query and how can we make it better. Fantastic. So if, if you like a specific feature in Power Query, ideas.powerbi.com, that's where you go. And uh, then when you created your idea, you send an email to your entire organization, go and vote for that idea. Uh, <laughs> then, <sure>. these people, <laughs> then these people will go and have a look at that. Uh, but uh, by the way, so like uh, when an idea gets a good number of votes and when it is, let's say, uh, there are lots of other factors as well, like how long it takes to develop and things like that, hopefully you get to see uh, sometime soon. Right. Uh, uh, you talked about Excel. Let's talk about Power Query things that are coming in Excel, Power Query features that are coming in Excel. Great. So we just had a big release on Excel a couple of weeks ago where we introduced data profiling and we introduced M IntelliSense as well as uh, Fuzzy Merge and some of the other uh, advanced transformation capabilities there. So as uh, you know, uh, Power Query in Excel is where it all started uh, five, six years ago. So it's always a pleasure to continue enhancing Power Query in Excel every month uh, with new features. So if you're not on the latest Excel versions, you should be. Uh, especially if you're on a subscription version of Office, you're going to get the latest you and greatest the latest, automatically. Yeah. Yep, so um, Power Query actually started from Excel, as uh, Miguel mentioned. Now we have it in Power BI. How many products we have it? Like Let's see, Excel, Power BI, Power Apps, Flow, Azure Data Factory, SSIS, um, I think that's it. SSIS. SSIS, SSDT as well. Yes, yeah. For creating AS tabular models. Yes. 
Uh, I guess so, that's it. So a lot of a lot of yes. products. Yeah, yes. um, we see like Power Query almost used everywhere. For those of you who again don't know what Power Query is, that's the get data and transform experience of Power BI. Uh, but you can use it everywhere. You can use it in Excel. If you are not not using Power BI, you can still use Power Query in Excel. That is a good replacement of a lot of your VBA macros. Mm -hmm. A lot of things you can do with that. Indeed. And, and if you still like BVA macros, you can use the Excel object model to author Power Query queries and refresh them programmatically through BVA as well. So you can have a cake and eat it as well. Awesome. That's great. Uh, so thank you for all of this information. You also um, have a good team of uh, Power Query in uh, a data integration team of Microsoft and you are hiring. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I should say I'm just the, uh, the face of an amazing team uh, back at Microsoft in Seattle. Actually, we're worldwide. We're Seattle. We have a team also on ILDC in Israel right, um, yeah. and a few other locations through Europe and North America. But yeah, our larger team works on Power Query, connectors, the common data model, the gateway, uh, connectors in Power Query, connectors in Power Apps and Flow. We're hiring developers, we're hiring program managers, we're hiring UX designers. So if any of you are passionate about Power Query or data in general uh, and are, uh, you know, have skills on these areas, we'd love to hear from you, careers.microsoft.com. Go search for Power Query and you'll find a bunch of opportunities. Yeah, and, and it is a fantastic, fantastic team, a great culture. I, I don't know like everyone in the team, but those that I know are fantastic people. They are really good. Uh, yeah, most absolutely. of them are here. I'm actually already. the worst of all of them. So <laughs> no, if you think I'm nice, they're much nicer. You are great. Uh, awesome. Uh, anything else you would like to add? Anything that Just uh, wanted to thank you again for uh, the opportunity to My interview. Pleasure. Thanks thank uh, the audience for uh, listening to us. If you've made it this far, if you didn't, then <laughs> you don't get to be thanked. Uh, but yeah, again, pretty excited about everything going on in the Power Query and Power Platform overall. A uh, lot of momentum on new features, a lot of uptake, a lot of enthusiasm from the community, which is a great place to be. Uh, so again, thank you for everything you do uh, as customers, as community members to, uh, to improve um, our uh, products and our community and our you know lives thank you thank you miguel thank you for your time we appreciate what you have done and thank you everyone for watching see you next time see you thank you